Hi everyone, welcome to this Google Classroom tutorial for students and families. Let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that your student has successfully logged into their Westwood Google account. Once they have done that, to the left of their icon associated with their Westward account, locate the Google Apps grid. Go ahead and select that grid and locate the classroom app icon. If the classroom icon is not readily available for you in this first panel, scroll down under more apps to locate it. If that navigation is clunky for you, you can always navigate to the homepage going to classroom.google.com. So either way you access Google Classroom, the first spot you will open up to is the home page. The home page is an overview of all of the classes that your student is already a member of. And what you see here for this test student is that this student is a member of three different Google Classrooms. And if you are being asked to join a new classroom, your teacher will have sent your student a class code. To join a new class, locate that plus sign in the upper right hand corner and select join class. Copy and paste the class code that was emailed to your student and select join. That new classroom will automatically open up for you and you're ready to go. To get back to where we started, back to that home page view, locate the three horizontal lines in the upper left hand corner of your screen and go ahead and select classes. And we're back where we started. So if you remember when we started, there was only three tiles in the home page and now there's four to show that you've successfully joined a new classroom. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna just take a tour of one classroom. When you open a classroom, you are welcomed by the stream view. This view will look a lot like a social media page where any type of post that happens, whether it be an announcement from a teacher or just the announcement that a new assignment has been posted, it will all be posted chronologically. So very much again, like a social media feed. To the left of the stream tab, I'm sorry, to the right of the stream tab is the classwork tab. This is where all of the content is housed. And in the classwork tab, you can navigate all of the content for that has been pushed out throughout the existence of a classroom via the topics created by the teacher. And each topic on the left-hand side navigation menu is a hyperlink and a filter that allows you to view a specific topic at a glance. I'm going to go back to all topics. From here, I'd like you to explore the view your work option. Again, everything in Classroom is a hyperlink. So when you click it, it's going to have some type of function and usually a very useful one. So when I select view your work here, what happens is that I am brought to a page that lists all of the assignments that have been assigned in this classroom in reverse chronological order. The title of the assignment, the date that the assignment was due, and the assignment's status. Is it turned in or missing? For this student, again, it's a test student, you can see that everything is missing with the exception of three assignments that have been marked as both turned in but turned in late based upon the due date. Now, if you would like to complete an assignment from this view, again, everything is a link. So go ahead and select the title of an assignment, view that assignment's details, and you're brought back to the nitty gritty details of an assignment. I'm gonna go back to the classwork tab view, and in addition to the functionality of viewing your work at a, in one place, you can also select Google Calendar and see the due dates that are associated with assignments that have been pushed out in this existing class, as well as view the work 
that your student has submitted to Classroom in a Class Drive folder. So if you click the Class Drive folder, a new tab will open to Google Drive and you will see that this student's folder has three assignments um, that have been submitted because if we remember only three were turned in and the rest were missing. Now the Drive folder um, is titled the exact same name as the classroom and that folder is housed in a classroom folder which is housed in your Drive. Back over to the Classwork tab of Google Classroom. If you are ready to complete an assignment, go ahead and select an assignment. Now, this will open up a smaller version of the assignment. I urge you to not just look at the assignment through this function, but to go ahead and click View Assignment. And that way you can see all of the details. Some teachers may post more than one link to an assignment thread and it is only visible in the View Assignment function. If that teacher has asked you to complete an assignment by adding or creating a document, you can do so by selecting the plus add or create function and you can add it, a document directly from Google Drive, you can add a link from the web, you can add a file, but you can also, and this is very helpful, create a brand new doc, slide, sheets, or drawings. And what is very helpful about starting a new document, if necessary, using the create function is that when you do so, a, the document that's created is automatically titled, the same title as the assignment, and appended with your student's name. Once that assignment has been completed, you can make sure that everything is looking spectacular and on your student's end, they have this nifty turn in function in the upper right hand corner. And again, this turn in function is available to your student, whether they created the document or the teacher pushed out a document for them to complete. I'm going to go ahead and hit turn in. And you will see it will prompt me one more time. Are you sure you want to turn in? I'm going to say yes. And the status of the assignment just changed from missing to turned in late. If your student happens to remember that there was a piece that they forgot to complete, they do have the ability to unsubmit that assignment, make changes, and resubmit. Now, important for students and families alike to know is that a teacher is very privy to submission timestamps and how many times a student may unsubmit and resubmit a document. So everything is tracked. All activity is tracked here. Now to get back to the classwork tab of this classroom, you can now see that the student has successfully completed task 2A. And notice that there is a color differentiation here between completed assignments and incomplete assignments. And if I go ahead and click view my work, you will see now I no longer only have three assignments successfully turned in, but now four. I'm hoping that you found this tutorial helpful and that you are able to conquer Google Classroom with much success. Thank you so much for watching.